What hides beneath the surface when light can barely reach? A world steeped in amber shadows and the decay of leaves. Blackwater rivers that stretch across continents. What do they conceal? And why do the fish here thrive where others would perish? Today, we uncover those secrets and explore the stories etched into these dark waters. But first, let me take you back to a time when I nearly gave up on Blackwater Aquariums altogether. You know, funny story, when I first set up an aquarium, I only knew one way, and it was perceived on social media and in shops that we needed to have clear, pristine water and very bright lights. That was the ideal in conditions, or so I thought. So one day, I added a few leaves to a tank thinking that it might make my better setup look a bit more natural because I'd read a few things online about the benefits of them. But then something unexpected happened. The water turned brown. I was confused. Did I mess it up? Was this a mistake? But that single moment sparked a question that led me down a path that I never anticipated. The world of Blackwater Aquariums and the hidden benefits that they hold. These rivers, the Rio Negro in Brazil, the Orinoco in Venezuela and the peat swamps of Southeast Asia aren't just bodies of water, they are entire ecosystems shaped by the land, the trees and time. Let's start with the mighty Rio Negro. The Rio Negro, stretching over 1400 miles across the heart of the Amazon, is the largest black water river on earth. Its dark, tea-coloured waters are stained by tannins released from decaying leaves and organic matter in the surrounding rainforest. This natural process creates an environment with remarkably low pH levels, often ranging between 4 and 5, making it inhospitable for many pathogens and parasites. Despite the harsh conditions, it is a sanctuary for diverse aquatic life, where species have evolved to thrive in acidic waters. Here you'll find the iconic Cardinal Tetra, their neon stripes glowing like tiny lights in the dark water. It's a vivid contrast to the dull colours of their surroundings. These fish have adapted to navigate acidic tannin rich environments with remarkable efficiency. It's a rich and vibrant ecosystem, home to many of the freshwater species that we admire and keep in our aquariums. These fish thrive in an environment that mirrors their natural habitat, where the riverbed is layered with soft, organic carpet of decaying leaves, twigs and other botanicals. This intricate mix of organic matter not only provides a shelter and breeding grounds, but also releases the essential tannins and nutrients into the water, creating the warm, tea-stained hues and slightly acidic conditions that define a true blackwater habitat. Next, the Orinoco River. A vast system winding its way through Venezuela and Colombia. While it's not entirely black water, many, many of its tributaries carry that signature tannin stain, a result of organic material breaking down in surrounding forests. These weave together a complex aquatic network where different water types, black water, clear water, and even white water intermingle, creating one of the most biologically diverse river systems on the planet. The unique blend of water chemistry supports a staggering array of life, from fish to invertebrates and aquatic plants. Seasonal flooding cycles reshape the ecosystem, submerging vast swaths of forest and creating a temporary aquatic habitat that sustains countless species. This dynamic environment has driven the evolution of highly specialized adaptions in its inhabitants. Many fish have developed a remarkable tolerance to fluctuations in water parameters. Here we have fish like the angelfish, which has evolved to blend perfectly with submerged roots and driftwood. Their elegant shapes and colors mimic the shadows and patterns of the environment. It's nature's camouflage at its finest. It was around this time I realized something crucial about my own aquarium. Nature doesn't rush. They don't care about perfection, timelines, or pristine clarity. It's messy, chaotic even, but in that chaos is a fragile yet powerful balance. I'd been fighting it and clinging on to the notion of controlling every aspect of my aquarium. I wanted clear water and to be able to control that. But the tank, much like black water rivers themselves, has its own rhythm. The leaves decomposed as they should, tannin seeped into the water, and life adjusted. I realized then that sometimes the best thing you can do is step back and let nature take the lead. Finally, we travel to Southeast Asia's peat swamps, a labyrinth of dark, acidic water 
born from the slow decomposition of organic matter over thousands of years. These swamps are rich in tannins and humic acids, staining the water a deep brown and creating a highly acidic environment where the pH can dip as low as 3.5. Here, life thrive against the odds. The wild better fish, far from its colorful tank bred counterparts, has adapted perfectly to this challenging habitat. These fish are equipped with labyrinth organs that allow them to breathe atmospheric oxygen, enabling survival in oxygen dilapidated waters where other species would struggle. The dense vegetation and murky conditions have shaped their behavior and physiology over time, turning them into resilient survivors capable of navigating through submerged roots and decaying foliage. This ecosystem is more than just a home. It's a testament to nature's ingenuity, showcasing how life can flourish even in the most hostile conditions. You know, it's a stark reminder of how adaptable life can be, thriving in conditions that may seem inhospitable to the untrained eye. These blackwater environments are not just habitats. They are intricate systems where every organism from the smallest microbe to the largest fish has learned to survive and flourish in a delicate balance. In these waters, life is shaped by microorganisms, abundance, light and shadow, creating a rich ecosystem that thrives against the odds. It's a clear lesson in resilience, teaching us that even in the most challenging conditions, life finds a way to persist, evolve and adapt to the most unexpected ways possible. So now, when I look at my tank, I see more than just water and fish. I see stories, stories written by rivers half a world away. And that's the real beauty of natural aquariums. You know, they go deeper than just keeping fish. It's about building an entire ecosystem for the animals to thrive. The question is, what if we could bring a little more of that world into our own? To answer this, we need to look above the surface.